Hi, this is Vaughan in Nova Scotia. Um, it's April 15th or 16th, um, and we're about 30 days into the lockdown now. Um, so I thought I'd uh, throw a bunch of plates for you. Uh, I took an order for uh, six dinner plates and seven side plates. So uh, I'm going to do this and uh, you can see how I throw plates. There is a couple of things you need to know that when you are actually making a plate, if the rim and the flat area in the center of the plate are different thicknesses, you're likely to get cracks. Uh, if you have a really thick area in the center and a thin area on the rim, you're likely to get a crack because the rim will dry faster than the center of the plate. So obviously a dry area will actually uh, won't shrink in them and will restrict str shrinkage. So the center is still trying to shrink if it's thick and the outer rim is thin, um, you'll get a crack. So you're trying to get it to dry evenly um, and you need to put some compression. So I'll talk about that as I do it. All right, I want to get onto this. It's a uh, Shimpo Whisper I'm throwing on with B Mix clay, which is Laguna. I buy my clay, I, re I use Recycle too, as you've seen in the past, but this is fresh clay. I dampen the wheel head, I make a little kind of uh, dome there so that when I put it down, and I'm going to tilt you now so you can see the wheel head, there you go. So basically the dome will stop any air getting trapped in the center. All right, so that's sealed down. So you've got to pull yourself right up to the wheel. Just make sure you can see, perfect. All righty, okay, so Nova Scotia plates, all right wet hands, put some pressure on, fairly fast speed, try to stop it wobbling. I'm putting about 30 pounds of pressure on with each hand and that forces that clay to form that shape in between my hands. All right, then I'm going to cone it just to make sure the clay is nice and even throughout the consistency. And then I'm going to push it down throwing a bunch of water right on the top every time make the hockey puck as I've seen you shan't see me do before okay nice compression right at the bottom on the outside fingers so that finger all the way around is pushing in without going underneath you don't want to mushroom the clay I'm going to keep the wall fairly straight but that way press down press in and you get some good compression so the plate is light, less likely to crack. Wet all the way. Now this hand's going to press all the way down and the left hand is going to let go a little bit but put back a little bit of pressure just to keep some compression. Press down again. Notice how fast I have to get water. Pull my right hand to my body now. It's drying out so I've got to get some water again. There you go. Now, rings a little bit uneven in the center. That's natural because of your hand shape. So I use a rubber rib to press down, pull out to the outer edge, back to the center. As long as you've got slipping and it isn't sticking, just keep doing that. If it starts to stick, let go slowly. That puts some compression on the base. Dribble some water right on the rim. So it goes inside and outside. Push fingers in on the outside, inside fingers resist a little bit, but then you bring your fingers to the top before it dries. And then on the very top, you put a finger down over the rim to compress again. Water goes inside and outside the wall when you do it right at the edge of the rim. Press in with the outside fingers, pull up slowly. One revolution, you should be a little higher each time. That way you stay at the sweet wet spot. All right, so we've got two pulls. So I've got a rim there that's about five, six centimeters high. So I'm drying the sponge, cleaning it, suck all the water off the inside completely, dragged over the rim, get all the water off the outside. And the next piece thing is optional. I'm using my wooden tool I push in right at the base, right at the wheel head, so I go underneath a little bit. Oh, there you go, that lump of clay decided he wanted to stick. All right, now a little higher up, one centimeter at the most, 
I push in again so it gives me a little bit of a groove that I can hang my plates using picture wire. If people buy them for a decorative plate then you, you may never get seafood on it at all but these will get used but if you have the option you can put that little groove on so people can hang your piece without seeing picture uh, plate stand wire sticking over the rims which I was hated. But anyway we've already dried it on the outside, dried on the inside. Now two fingers and my outside fingers are just barely going to touch the, the rim but I put pressure down with my finger only about half a centimeter from the bottom of the pl plate. I want to actually have a corner without actually having a sharp edge corner and I'm just basically pulling the flat rim out and down a touch. Now your clay depending on how soft it is will collapse or it will stand. You have to judge that just through experience. Now that corner this there I'm going to soften it so it's not got a sharp edge because the slip that I'm going to decorate these with if it gets a corner it tends to crack right at the corner so I'm trying to have a slow gradual slope going across the edge and that's a plate. Um, you can actually use a leather or if you want to just but it doesn't really matter to me with these because I trim the rim of my plates anyway when I'm doing this deck technique but you can just smooth off your rim a little bit if you want to. All right, that's one. I've already thrown two, um, and I've got to throw, oh, and this is third, the third one. So I have to throw eight plates all together because the lady wants six, and I just figured I'll have a couple of spares. Um, there you go. Now this bat has some red clay on it, so I've got to be very careful. If you use different colored clays in your studio, I have a separate wheel just for my red clay. Um, but this bat was left with some on. It's actually probably my recycled clay, not the red, but it would actually make some marks across my white clay, so I've got to get it off carefully. All right, so. Clean your wheel head. It's it's moist, not wet. <clears throat> Fresh clay. I round off the bottom. So there's a dome. Make sure there's no crease. You can make sure there's no area where a bubble can get trapped of air. It's still moist in the center. Right, number two. Full speed on the wheel. Once the clay is stuck down, you can start spinning full speed. Do the cone. Press back down, make a hockey puck. The wheel is still spinning, not quite full speed. Now my little finger burning on the plastic there, but it has to push back to keep that compression, keep that wall straight rather than curling underneath. So you end up with a mushroom almost. You don't want a mushroom. Now push down, nice wet hand, press down. drying so I've got to get water down again the thickness of the bottom is between a half a centimeter and a centimeter get my rib little rubber rib flatten the bottom compresses it down gets rid of any throwing rings This is a plate for eating off, so I tend to make them fairly flat where the food will sit, so the knife doesn't cut across that throwing ring kind of thing. There you go. Push the fingers in on the outside, resist a little bit on the inside. Now 
rim, fingers on the rim, compress again, dribble the water inside and outside, fingertips press on the outside so you get a little bump above your fingers and you pull up the wall and let go slowly at the rim. I always compress a little bit down at the rim, clean your sponge, drag all the water off on the inside, inside flat area and also the wall, clean the wheel, you're not going to get to the outside of the plate once you lower it so you've got to get all the water off and using a wooden tool I push the edge in, goes underneath, makes that little undercut, use the other end of the tool and I make another one about half a centimeter up so it gives me that V edge I'll show you when I take this one off the wheel okay I'm just checking to make sure it's clean and dry and then two fingers about half a centimeter from the very bottom you stop pressing those two fingers down my outside fingers are just supporting a little bit they're not putting pressure on they're just barely touching the clay on the outside but they're there to sort of tell whether I'm get I sort of have any give because you can tell if the rim cup starts to collapse you'll feel it and my outside fingers can tell that now I want to soften that edge so I don't have I just pulled a little bit of clay off because there was a little corner there but I'm trying to round off that edge and that way I won't have where the slip builds up you end up with a sometimes a little crack use the soften spot now I trim the rims of these plates afterwards when I've decorated them so I like a white edge to my plate although these ones will actually have a black edge because the lady prefers the black up the very outside edge that's number two so it's about 13 inches across so it would actually shrink in the firing to about 11 and a half which is about a dinner size plate and I'll do one more and I did say I would show you that plate edge so let's see if I can lift it so you can see that there's that undercut see so I can put picture of wire right around there all right next one let's get that brown clay off there again very carefully so it doesn't leave anything what do I have there I must have a sharp edge on my plastic back because it was catching the rib Oh, I know what it was. This this is a bat that I have. I, I used a heat gun on it and it's plastic, so it actually melted the bat a little bit. So let's get a different one. Yeah, when I was throwing big pieces, I used to use a torch on the outside of my pieces. Uh, I don't use a, a propane torch. I actually use a paint stripping gun, uh, gun and it's a bit easier on the pot than the actual propane torch, which I think um, I actually had some slip once peeling off pieces that I decorated with slip and I think it was because the propane may leave an oily residue after you've used it um, so I stopped using propane torches I still have one but I basically changed over to this paint stripping um, gun and it actually works just as good but it uses electricity obviously so. all right round off the bottom Watch this one, I'll do it fast because uh, it's the third one, you know how to do it now. All right. Decorating is always where all the labor is because if you're painting something with a, it takes very little time to throw something because I've got 45 years worth of experience. But painting, doesn't matter how much experience, it never gets any quicker. You use a paintbrush, you paint, and it's just time. There you go. And the wheel is going pretty fast. I don't know if any seagulls came behind me. I don't think you can see them now. I had a whole flock of seagulls out behind my studio. 
it's lobster season finishing May 1st and so this they start fishing right outside in the bay here during this time of the year so the lots more seagulls come in and they like to sit on my balcony on the building because we're on the water they make a lot of mess though but they're fun to watch it's like having chickens but you don't get the eggs okay flatten them they're very clean birds so you can see why when people get an oil spill near them they're so upset because these birds just look so beautiful and white and clean and it would be a shame if they ever got oil on them okay dribbling some water on the rim fingers on the outside and on the inside but not much pressure from the inside a lot of pressure from the outside come up it's starting to drag so I've got to let go dribble water right at the edge of the rim so it goes inside and out fingertips deep press on the ins outside resist a little bit on the inside and pull the wall up every revolution you're right or a little bit higher up so you're always on that wet area so two pulls you get about five six centimeters up it's about two inches now take the rib underneath give you that foot make sure there's no water because that once that rim goes down you're done and as an extra thing you won't see in this video uh, these rims as they dry they start to lift up um, and my rim can get quite high just by drying I, I think it's the pull of the clay as it dries but anyway I always put them back on the wheel about an hour or two later and I lower the rim again it only lifts up maybe you know a half an inch to an inch but it's enough to make it look like a bowl instead of a plate anyway <coughs> fingers down half a centimeter from the bottom pull out towards your body support with the finger underneath now I will decorate these so I'll show you a little short video later on There we go. And if you want to, but I trim these rims, as I've said, you can just take anything that's off on the rim, but I will be trimming the edge. And then I'll be painting black on these too. So, all right, that's three plates. Um, oh, let's give you one quick look at the out underneath again. Okay, that groove under there is where I'll have picture wire so I can hang the plates. All right, there we go. So, um, Hope you enjoyed that. Um, plates are nice, they're kind of relaxing to make. Um, got to put a lot of pressure on. And now you've got to watch them carefully through the drying process. So don't dry them fast. If you've got a damp cupboard, uh, you can protect them that way and make them dry, usually over about three days uh, for drying. If it's really dry weather, uh, you can, might even have to sh put a little bit of plastic over the rims. Because remember, you want the plate to dry evenly across don't let the rim dry before the center is dry uh, otherwise you'll get some split cracks in the as the center dries and the outer edge isn't going to allow to be pulled in anymore it will mean the, the inside gets stressed and it cracks um, and uh, and that's uh, that's it I gotta throw a couple more yeah three more to go uh, and then I'm gonna throw some small versions of this uh, and I'll start decorating sometime this afternoon maybe I'll have time to post another video but that may be tomorrow or the next day uh, for the decorating all right I always decorate while they're still pretty soft but okay born in Nova Scotia uh, I hope you enjoyed talk to you soon bye <laughs>